الله اكبر الله اكبر بشار الكلب تكبير الله اكبر الله اكبر I'm, I'm trying to be a, a, as conciliatory as I can. And people saying what is generally, oh, God be praised, thank God, uh, if they've come out of a war zone alive, or maybe even if they've shot down an enemy plane. But when you've disemboweled and gutted someone who can't even fight back, or they're dying, or, or, or they're dead, and then you praise God for this, then there's something profoundly wrong. It's used over and over again, this idea of praising God for slaughter. It's horrible. It, it's, it's anti-human. It's certainly anti-God. The Syrian crisis. Barack Obama spoke today for, what, 40 minutes? It seemed to be about five days, actually, and didn't say anything. He didn't say anything at all. Alex Holstein, expert on, on terrorism and, uh, and also Russia, and we'll get to that in a few moments' time. Obama is losing so badly. The Russians mm. are loving this. The Syrians mm -hmm. think it makes them look very strong. All of America's traditional enemies are rejoicing at Barack Obama. Absolutely. Right now, I mean, uh, the, the thing that has hurt American foreign policy the most throughout the world is the is the theater of the absurd we've mm. seen play out in Congress. And, and this time, not Congress's fault. They're just the receptacle for this uh, performance. They're, yeah. they're the uh, venue, I should say, for this uh, performance that uh, Secretary of State John Kerry has put on in front of them. I, it has damaged them considerably because of the hypocrisy involved when you compare to these are the same people that opposed the Iraq war so mm. uh, vociferously. And at that time, of course, uh, Saddam Hussein had killed far many more people with chemical weapons of his own people than, uh, than uh, Bashir al-Assad might have done. We haven't even seen the uh, evidence of that yet. Uh, I'm, I'm open-minded about that, but I, at the same time, uh, where is the evidence? Where, mm. where is all this special evidence that we've seen that, that links him to the crime and clearly shows that the regime was involved? Mm. Um, I think President Putin is right to ask for that evidence. I'm not one to side with the KGB, but he's absolutely within his rights to say, hey, uh, on the world stage, you're making this a global issue. Mm. Uh, where is the evidence? And he's holding their feet to the fire for very good reason, as you pointed out. Yeah, he is. And he's doing very well domestically. People who were ambivalent about Putin are coming in, into his, his favor. In Russia China loves it when NATO. Yeah, the, anything yeah. that humiliates the Americans yeah. must be a good thing. Saddam Hussein did invade other countries. Mm -hmm. he, he, he was an imperialist. He believed mm -hmm. in expanding his country, he believed in greater Iraq. Now, Syria, they were involved in Lebanon for a while, but if you know the Middle East, Lebanon is such an artificial construct in a way, and there were many Lebanese who actually did want the Syrian army, and sure. it, in some ways it was a force for stability, but Israel and Syria were fighting over Lebanon. It was different. Assad has no particular ambitions. He just wants to stay in power. Saddam, I'm not saying I supported the Iraq war, but Saddam was tangibly more of a threat mm -hmm. to his people and to other people in the neighborhood than Assad. Yet mm -hmm. the same people, Kerry and Obama and, and the group around them who opposed the Iraq war, are gung-ho over Syria. And, and let's not forget that John Kerry voted for the war before he voted against yes, the war, as yes. he famously flip-flopped in his, in his campaign. But uh, absolutely, I mean, these are the same people that were against uh, Saddam Hussein, who was a far more brutal dictator. And somehow, uh, what, what is really, and, and I can understand, if, if, if they were legitimately concerned about Bashir al-Assad having chemical weapons, I can understand the, the uh, argument for military intervention. Mm -hmm. But this type of military intervention, which they say, we're going to not use combat forces, but we are going to use combat forces. There's going to be no boots on the ground. So I so suppose special operations forces wear Jimmy Choo high heels or something <laughs> like that. Um, and uh, we're not, and, and naval forces aren't combat forces. And uh, this isn't going to be warfare. It's not war in the classic sense. Why? Because we're using cruise missiles. I mean, does this mean that uh, President Obama should be going back to Congress every time he carries out a drone strike and, in, on someone else's sovereign territory? I agree with the drone strike program. I agree with targeted killing of terrorists. But in this case, the damage will be far worse, I think, from a cruise missile strike. I think you're going to unleash a, a, a Hezbollah uh, throughout the Middle East. Uh, clearly, uh, Iran has made it clear. They put the word on the street. If if an attack occurs, then it's open season on Americans. Hezbollah is going to start kidnapping Americans. It's going to be like Beirut in As the 70s and the 80s all over again. Just, just one small point. Sure. I, I'm not a military expert. You know far more about this than I do. But um, when I look at the history of how special forces have been used, the assumption will be they're already there. Mm -hmm. And if you're targeting specific areas, and I, I, I know this from having seen the IDF at work, you have to have men on the ground. It's not just from a computer. They're, they're directing, they're identifying Mm -hmm. And it could be as, as large as this, for goodness sake. That's right. Sake. So 
the chances are there are already American special forces absolutely. in Syria. Yeah, there, absolutely. Well, we know that, that either uh, what Obama did in, in the Libyan war, which was really smart, if, 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 and we might find out later that Green Berets or Navy SEALs were there, but uh, he used CIA Special Operations Group guys. The amazing thing about the CIA Special Operations Group, which is their paramilitary operations officers, mm. is they are all former Navy SEALs, Special Forces, uh, Delta Force, all those guys. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are even seconded to to the CIA and are still serving in Delta mm. or the, their uh, regular or their units. Mm. Um, so uh, they are actually all Special Forces guys. I consider the CIA Special Operations Group a combat force and boots on the ground when we put them there. I don't think the American people need to know they're there, and I don't think it's a problem if we use them there. In fact, that's what we should be doing. We should have those guys on the ground doing surveillance, reconnaissance, making mm. sure that, the, that if there are chemical weapons, they aren't getting in the hands of the jihadists. And not more taking sides. This is the, the, other, the crucial aspect exactly. of this. They mustn't take sides because to back those who oppose Assad could be one of the worst foreign policy decisions we have ever made in the world. Absolutely. Rest. It could make Iraq look like uh, you know, a simple uh, mm. uh, nursery school uh, uh, situation. I mean, something uh, very gentle and... and uh, benign in comparison. Benign, absolutely. yes. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you very much.